Welcome to the Micronic stand here at SMT Hybrid Packaging. Uh, joined by Thomas Stetter, uh, who of course uh, has been involved with the meteoric growth of Micronic in the recent couple of years. Good to see you again, Thomas. Thanks, Rick. Thanks. So, um, we're going to talk first of all about products. I mean, we're really here to talk about products. So you've got some more updates uh, or some recent applications for the jet printer. Can we talk about that first? Yes. Uh, oh. uh, I think one of the exciting news is that we have now a twin solution, a twin application with our jet printing. Yeah. Maybe our jet printer is known that it's uh, basically a little bit lower volume applications. Now basically we really have a, a twin solution where we can balance both jet printers mm -hmm. and we are entering now a mid-volume market. So we have the first very successful uh, implementations of this solution okay. and that's really something where these customers could get rid 100% of stencils. Really? And of course this is a quite exciting news I think we have. Okay, so this is, this is since you added the second head and made it a, a twin head machine, it's, it's increased the speed to a point which is going to be able to do uh, lower, lower to medium uh, volume? It's basically both. So first of all we have two heads in the machine but yeah. basically these are now setups where we have two machines in a row. Okay, I see. And these machines of course are now balanced mm -hmm. so they are used in an optimized way mm -hmm. and by this now we can enter many customer segments and applications mm -hmm. where we can do a full stencil replacement. Right. Of course we always have also the mixed opportunity which is stencil and jet printing. Would it be on your development plan at some point to make a forehead machine so that you could do it in one machine? Uh, I would say then it would not. It would be hard to optimize also uh, the complexity with, with the throughput. So that's not really on our roadmap right now. Right, okay. okay. Good. I'll just ask the question. So um, standing behind us, of course, we have the, the one of your acquisitions from six months ago. Uh, which was VI technology, your SBI system. Uh, so uh, tell me a little bit, how is that going? And uh, has there been any updates to it? So I think the Pi, you must know, it was a very, very new product. Mm -hmm. I think the Pi is one of the most user-friendly SPI machines worldwide yeah. on the market. Yeah. It was used basically with gaming competence in mind to make it Easy, to make it possible to, to learn to configure it in basically one hour. So on Pi, on the product, there is nothing new. What is new is that uh, VI is now fully integrated in our mm -hmm. sales organization, yep. including also our resellers. Mm -hmm. And we see basically the first successes that when we present also the Pi 3D SPI and the K-Series 3D AOI to our Micronic customers said we got now the first orders also for new customers to VI. Okay, good, good, excellent. So that's, that's, uh, that's really good news. It was a very well engineered machine right from yeah, the get-go. Right. It really was. Um, okay, what else have we got new on the stand this week? We basically, uh, product-wise, we have the 8000 uh, SMD tower, mm -hmm. which is the most compact uh, SMD tower solution uh, on the market. Okay. Uh, we can store over 1,100 reels on 1.5 square meters. Wow. So we are proud uh, on this one. And the whole tower business for us, we call it also internally in our material handling. Right. Because when you talk to customers at an SMT line, it's basically not any longer now the speed of the machine. It's basically all the other limiting factors. And I just had a talk with a, with a big customer to us. It's really this material handling process from the warehousing system, uh, more or less in the central warehouse, to the line with SMT towers in between and all the process. So It's, it's, defi it's definitely material. Uh, machine downtime is the right. big thing. Uh, and try and keep, keep the line fed and, and, and right. things working. But the tower business seems to be breaking into like two schools, if you like. I mean, you're getting, some of them are getting very big. Uh, as you mentioned, you're on a, a small fl footprint. Some of them are getting very big and then using AG, AVGs to deliver That's the correct. product to, to the line. That's correct. Um, on a smaller footprint though, you, if you're working with, depending on the volume of the customer's doing, uh, could have the storage tower closer uh, yes. physically to, to, to the line. Yes. Uh, is that, is that your, your view, your strategy with it? I think also we have, a, we don't want to close the doors for, for different setups. Mm -hmm. Right now if you 
walk around in, in, in a fair like this. You see HEVs around where robots are installed on the HEV. You have other solutions where the robot is basically in, uh, in tower-like or, yeah. or container-like uh, 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 shapes. Uh, I think it has not matured yet and I think that the customer requirements are so different in the market that there is space for different kind of solutions. We do tests and pilots also with companies coming from the robotic side uh, and we will basically through the course of 2018 also uh, we'll do some reports what we have done in, in, in these pilots and of course I think we should use also robotics, uh, HEVs, whatever basically to, to improve the, the material flow. Would you be looking to bring in robotics and cobots into the into the uh, processing side as well with your machines, to, to, uh, where, it be, where it makes sense? Where it makes sense, yeah. yeah, yeah. I would not exclude it. Yeah. Um, good. Uh, on the placement side, anything anything changed there? No, on the placement side, I mean also the uh, what we call my Pro, the my 700 and the 300 are really young products to the market, which we just released last year. So we are completing on the software functionality, what we call My Center uh, and My Plan, continuously the, the offering. Uh, but the machine itself, basically, it's uh, it's it's a mature uh, concept which we think we have. Our DNA will always be high flex. Yep. We are the experts in high flex, and we are step by step moving up the the uh, ladder in mid volume not only with the machine, but also everything which is around the machine. I mean, well, you meant, you know, high flex is actually a very Im important area at the moment. I mean, uh, turnover time, change over time is, is critical. Uh, it's another big bottleneck in factories. Uh, and some of these new standards that are coming out are going towards making that easier by automatically adjusting the rails and uh, for the jobs and the setup, right. reducing setup time. Uh, so uh, I think that will play better into the, the type of market that you're already in. Yes, definitely. And I think the, from, a, from a market point of view to our customers, mm. the high flex requirement will move up from lower volume to definitely mid volume or mm. higher mid volume. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing, of course, where, where we think we can contribute in the future. Well, I know I'm going to be discussing strategy with your colleague tomorrow morning, so I'm not going to... Uh, 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 burst his bubble on that. So, uh, right for now, ten Thomas, I want to thank you for giving us an update on the equipment side and all uh, the recent uh, additions to the Micronic family. Uh, and thank you for joining us today. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.